I call the Honourable Maggie Berry. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Well, Budget 2018, despite the, the protests, the shouting, the belligerence uh, of the other side, uh, we don't believe them. This is a bad budget. Uh, we heard Willie Jackson shouting, shouting and bellowing, shouting about it. Uh, Willie Jackson doesn't make it so. Might have on Radio Live. Doesn't cut it here. Patronising platitudes that we don't know Māori. Well, what a delusional zone that member's living in. What a lot of blather and nonsense about values from the member who just resumed her seat. Let's have a good look at, at shall we, at this budget. After its very flat delivery, and notice they're getting very shouty over the other side of the House, but how will this coalition budget, their first one, actually be remembered? Let me count the ways. Some have described it as an epic fail. That's quite kind, I thought. Our national leader, Simon Bridges, said it was a classic Labour effort of lulled, uh, big spend, big tax, big borrow and hope. Bernard Hickey, a journalist, called it the biggest missed opportunity in a generation. My eloquent colleague, the Honourable Amy Adams, earlier described it somewhat whimsically, but I thought very accurately, as the dowry budget, to prop up the marriage of convenience for the cost of doing business with Winston Peters, which is a not inconsiderable cost. A billion dollars here, a billion trees there, slush funds, uh, really attractive horses and fillies. Who knows where the lack of substance will lead us? I know I'm not backing that team, but it is very apparent from the coalition and divvy up which of the partners is the most powerful. I mean, New Zealand first cut the Greens' lunch. Uh, the very weak Minister of Conservation had said she would double the budget for the Department of Conservation. Well, that didn't work out. Uh, hasn't delivered a darn thing except put our most vulnerable species closer to the brink of extinction. I'm more concerned as Minister for Seniors at this time in looking at the budget to find out what this budget actually delivered for vulnerable New Zealanders. I looked and I looked. It was nowhere to be found. Ching Ching, the unwise people who back New Zealand first, got plenty of payoffs. The older people in New Zealand, the ones who are vulnerable, who are being abused uh, in terms of elder abuse, financially, psychologically and physically, they got nothing. There was absolutely nothing uh, that, that the Labour delivered of its promises. The Aged Care Commissioner, a lot of big talk on the campaign trail uh, about having to have one to represent seniors, didn't happen. Uh, the Minister for Seniors again missing in action. Uh, dementia, I think, was probably one of the most disappointing. Uh, Alzheimer's New Zealand said it included no enhanced specialist dementia services. Why not? This is a group of people, more than 60,000 of us now in New Zealand, are estimated to be living with dementia. That number is set to triple to more than 170,000 by 2050. Uh, by which time, actually, uh, the, uh, the recent economic report that was uh, put together by Alzheimer's New Zealand uh, says that the annual cost of dementia and its care in New Zealand will be about $5 billion. Uh, uh, that's 170,000 people requiring a great deal of help. As Alzheimer's New Zealand said, uh, we need to put that investment in now, we need to do it or the vulnerable will suffer. And that's what this Labour government with its coalition members propping it up has delivered. Nothing to the vulnerable. Let's look at palliative care. That is so something that you know, the Justice Select Committee is considering at the moment. Why do we need to consider euthanasia when we need to be putting money into decent palliative care that will be delivered wherever and whenever people need it in this country? That's the kind of war hearted response and sensible finger on the pulse response that I would have expected from a government who understood what vulnerable New Zealanders were going through. I think that when we look at what uh, health got in this budget and see that what, New Zealand, what we would have done if uh, National had been in government, uh, it would have been a far different outlook. And I think that when we look at uh, the vulnerable uh, and the way that we have, as a, as a, a government in the past, uh, enshrined their needs and looked after them. I feel that we really are in a position where we can look across the House, call them out for what they are, which are heartless, heartless people, not in touch with the vulnerable communities around New Zealand, uncaring and unfeeling. Whether they're Māori uh, elders uh, with dementia, I see Willie Jackson looking up there, looking quizzical, as well you might, because your government did nothing whatsoever to help these people. Māori also missed out big time in this, in this uh, budget, and uh, I feel that New Zealanders are really grasping uh, the, the, the lack of substance and the flim-flam uh, that accompanies most every utterance from 
from this government. I feel that this budget uh, represents the government. It is disappointing. It is an epic fail and could do better, much better. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Kanwaljit Singh Bakshi, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to participate in this budget debate. Uh, Mr. Speaker.